Good morning children. I am Sandhyasis. Now I am going to teach you Human Genome Project or HGP. HGP. And first we have to see the basic things in relate to the Human Genome Project. So, the first point is actually this project was done for sequencing the base pairs in the human DNA. So, for sequencing the base pairs and this project is known as a mega project and why this project is commonly known as a mega project due to some reasons. Let's get into the details of that. And then we can see that as a second point. And this project was done in the year 1990. It was started in the year, started in 1990 and completed in 2003. That means it is a 30 year project. So they were taken 13 years to complete the work and moreover the cost of the project cost was 9 billion US dollars US dollars okay and it was started by the US Department of Energy and National Institute of Health, National Institute of Health. Okay, so they were started the project and it was started in the year 1990 and completed in 2003. So that was a 13 years project and the actual cost of the project was 9 billion. US dollars and these are the reasons they commonly called as a mega project and this was a mega project mega project and this project was done for sequencing the base pairs in the human DNA okay next we can see what are the methodologies used in this project. Before that, I want to tell you something that before getting to the details of the methodology. So as a sixth point, we have to see the project, the informations, to store the informations of this project, there were no provision or there were no software to store the information of this project. So, simultaneously another branch of biology were also developed along with the project and that branch of biology is called bioinformatics. So, bioinformatics is a branch of biology which is simultaneously developed along with the HGP to store the information about the project. So that is the next point. And next point, a committee were formed to deal with the problems arise from the project. And a committee, the committee is called ELSI. It is ethical, legal, social issues to deal with the ethical, legal and social issues that may arise from the project, a committee were formed. So these are the main points in relation to HGP. Next we can see what are the methodologies used in HGP. So methodology. So the first step in the methodology that is the isolation of DNA. So before that I want to tell you there are two approaches.
approaches. So the two approaches that first the DNA consists of two parts, which are the two parts, coding parts and the non-coding parts. The coding parts are exon that you know that involve in the protein synthesis, that take part in protein synthesis, and non-coding parts are they are called the intron, they do not take part in the protein synthesis. So coding strand is very few in number or very few coding strands are there and non-coding strands are more in the DNA sequence. And there were two approaches. The first approach, so let's see what are the approaches. First approach is to sequence, to sequence all the coding parts or coding parts of the DNA and that is known as express the sequence tag EST express the sequence tag okay and the second approach was to sequence all the parts that means coding and the non-coding parts of the DNA and that is called the sequence annotation sequence annotation that approach is called the sequence annotation is it clear? so before starting the project there were two approaches the first approach was to sequence all the coding parts of the DNA only and that approach is known as ESTS express the sequence tag okay express the expressed sequence tag that means the parts which are expressed as RNA that is a coding strand and the second approach was to sequence all the parts that means all coding and the non-coding parts of the DNA and that approach is known as sequence annotation. Finally, they were decided to follow this second approach that is sequence annotation. That was the approach to do the project. And now we can see what are the steps in this sequence annotation or what are the methodology used in sequence annotation. So, you can see the steps or methodology using sequence annotation. Okay, the first step is isolation of DNA. So, DNA is isolated from the human body. Okay, and second is fragmentation. Fragmentation by using a restriction enzyme or endonuclease enzyme. Endonuclease enzyme. So first they were taken the DNA, then it is cut into pieces or fragments. These fragments are formed with the help of an enzyme. So they are cut into small free fragments by using an enzyme called an endonuclease. Then the third step is introducing or clone this fragments into post cell. Okay, I'll show you how it happens. So here cloning that means introduction of this fragments into post cell. So they were using two post cell that is bacteria and yeast. And this bacteria for prokaryotes and yeast eukaryotes.
So they were using two types of host, bacteria and yeast. And this cloning was done by using or introduction of this fragment of DNA into the host cell was done by using vectors. Okay, yes. So there were there are two types of vectors. They are back and the young. It's very very important. Back means bacterial artificial chromosome and yak is the yeast artificial chromosome. So this is a bacteria artificial chromosome and this is the yeast artificial chromosome. These are the vectors they are using to clone the fractions of DNA into the host cell. So back is used to clone the DNA into bacterial cell and yak is used to clone the fragments of DNA into the yeast cell. Okay, so here in this human genome project to introduce into the host cell, they were using yak. So they were using yak as a vector to introduce into the yeast. Is it clear? And that is the third step and fourth step. So fourth step. When the DNA is there in the host cell, they start to multiply by re DNA recombinant. Mother. So they were using our DNA technology, recombinant DNA, recombinant DNA technology or multiplication, multiplication of DNA inside the host cell through recombinant DNA technology or Recombination of DNA. Due to the recombination of DNA inside the host cell, multiple copies or there is a multiplication of DNA inside the host cell. Okay. Then it is sequenced. Sequenced. So this DNA is sequenced on the basis of or by using a method called Sanders method. Sanders method and this method were developed by Frederick Sanchez. Okay, so the sequencing of this copies of DNA from the whole cell can be done or they were using Sanchez method which were developed by Frederick Sanchez. By using Sanchez method they were sequencing the DNA of the base pairs. Let's see the Sanchez method of DNA sequencing. On the basis of overlapping regions of DNA fragments, these sequences are arranged accordingly. For alignment of these sequences, specialized computer-based programs were developed. Finally, the genetic and physical maps of the genome were constructed by collecting information about certain repetitive DNA sequences and they are called the microsatellites and polymorphism. So I will teach you about the microsatellites and polymorphism. Now these are the methodologies used by Frederick Sancher or on the basis of Sancher's method they were sequencing the base pairs. Is it clear? Next we can see the salient features of this human genome project. That is very very important. What are the salient features of human genome project? HGP. So the questions will be there from each point of the salient features of HGP. The first point this point we can study as the result of HTP. So actually I am going to teach you the result of this HTP as the salient features of HTP. And the result, the first result was the total number of base in the human body is 3164 points
fifth one. Am I right? Here also, fifth one is showing difference. All other sequences are similar in these three individuals. Suppose this is the chromosome one of three individual, three human beings. Inside the chromosome, we can see the DNA. The DNA consists of genes. The genes consist of these base pairs. So this sequencing of base pairs showing only one nucleotide is different. So there is a difference in only one nucleotide. And that is called single nucleotide polymorphism. Single nucleotide polymorphism. What is polymorphism? Polymorphism is a difference in form, sequencing. Difference in sequencing or multiple forms is called a polymorphism. So there is a difference in the sequencing or that polymorphism is due to the difference in a single nucleotide. And that is called SNPS or single nucleotide polymorphism. It's commonly called SNPs. Okay, SNPs. So SNPs is a single nucleotide polymorphism. And around 1.4 million SNPs are there. Okay. So these are the main points or main salient features of human genome project. So in the next class we can see the DNA fingerprinting and the principles of DNA fingerprinting. Hope you understood everything about the human genome project. It is very very important. That's all for today. Thank you.